questions 106 to 108. So this unit uh, has some questions where some assume knowledge is of value. This is, of course, unusual for biology, for GAMSAT. Nonetheless, I thought we should uh, have a look at a couple of relevant sections in the book. So here is the so-called central dogma in biology, and that is that DNA is transcribed in the nucleus, uh, this is for eukaryotes, of course, uh, into messenger RNA, and messenger RNA is translated in the cytosol uh, in the environment that is provided by a ribosome into a protein. And so DNA is like the royalty in our cells. It sits in our nuclei and it directs the main events that our cells are going to be engaging in. And then it doesn't leave the nucleus to go and direct the workers as to what to do. Rather, a messenger transcribes the original message from DNA into a message that can leave the nucleus, enter the cytosol, sometimes free in the cytosol, sometimes associated with the endoplasmic reticulum, in which case it's the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And now that message from DNA is translated into proteins. And of course, it's the proteins that are the worker bees of our cells. They are the antibodies going throughout our bloodstreams and trying to fight off foreign invaders. They're the enzymes working day and night in all of our cells, reducing the activation energy for reactions that keep life possible. They are the protein hormones that are activating processes throughout our bodies. And what about transport in the plasma membrane? Could you imagine doing carrier-mediated transport where your life is to take things from high concentration down to low concentration and back and forth and back and forth? Or even active transport mediated by ATP. And then, of course, membrane channels, which is the subject of this unit, where proteins spanning the plasma membrane permit some solutes to cross. And in the case of nerve cells, this can result in depolarization. Now, I'd like to tell you about a popular tumor in medical school. All medical students remember the first time that they've seen a teratoma, which literally means monster tumor. And this tumor can arise from the ovaries or from the testicles. And inside of this tumor, there can be quite mature hair growing or teeth, muscle or bone. The point is tissue that shouldn't be growing there. And how is this possible? Because the same DNA that is in your brain is in your elbow and your left kneecap. The issue is activation. How is the control of the expression of DNA regulated? Now let's look at the LAC operon. These are DNA sequences in a bacterium that tell us a lot about the control of DNA expression. The key points are over here where the actual transcription begins. That's where RNA polymerase will function to start producing RNA which will eventually lead to protein production. But right next to this point is an area that can repress or prevent RNA polymerase production. And finally, some genes relating to the digestion of lactose, because this is called the lac operon, because it functions to digest this important carbohydrate, lactose, which is milk sugar. The key point relevant for us is the importance of the promoter in order to permit expression of the gene specific expression of genes according to the tissues in that environment is vital for survival. Okay, so we learned that DNA is transcribed in the nucleus into messenger RNA. This is what happens in eukaryotes, of course. And if you have a biomed degree, I'm sure you know that reverse transcriptase can take this backwards, but we're not going there right now. And messenger RNA is translated on a ribosome into protein. Now, what did we learn in paragraph two? In paragraph two, we are providing information to show that there are light-sensitive channel proteins that permit ions to cross the cell membrane or plasma membrane. And the objective which we are given in the first paragraph of the passage is the activation of certain responses. In paragraph three, we learned something that when I was a kid was pure science fiction. The idea of inserting a gene from algae into a mammal 
And of course, the gene is for the light-sensitive channel proteins, but we are told that a specific promoter for that mammalian cell type is added, and promoters are necessary to initiate transcription of particular genes. And then this is brought over to the mammalian cells using a vector, which is just a conduit. And notice that even though it is a virus, we are told in paragraph 3 that it is a benign virus, meaning it is not dangerous, or at least it has been rendered so that it is no longer dangerous. And eventually, the expectation is the production of a protein in the mammal, which is truly amazing. Okay, so let's get to the questions. Question 106. So this is just a little assumed knowledge. Ions crossing channel proteins leading to activation is depolarization. This is how neurons are activated. Now I know some of you that may have a more advanced biology degree might have been concerned about the chloride ions crossing the membrane for the NPHR receptor because in some mammalian neurons this can cause hyperpolarization as opposed to depolarization. However, hyperpolarization does not activate a neuron. It does the opposite. It makes it less likely that the neuron would be activated. And we are told from the outset that this is a condition of activation. So we must assume that in these other organisms, the process occurs differently. And so for 106, the answer is A. 107. Right away, when they put the expression, what limits the cell types? You must expect an answer that is very specific. And answer choice B is the most specific response because we know that we need a promoter that is specific to the cell type in order for the gene to be activated. The vector is just a conduit. It's like taking a form of public transportation. What's most important is who is being transported. The size of the channel protein might have an effect if it's so small that it starts to block the movement of ions. But frankly, without the right promoter, there'll be no expression of DNA at all for this gene. And so by far, 107, answer choice B is the best response. Question 108. So how does gene insertion? Okay, so A, cell metabolism is generally accelerated. But that's not necessarily true. In the last paragraph of the unit, we are told that as a result of this gene being expressed, investigators are able to turn specific mammalian neuron types on and off. Presumably, this means some neurons will be more activated and some will have reduced cell activities and, by implication, metabolism. Certainly, we have no clear indication regarding metabolism. Answer choice B states that the vector distributes the channel proteins. The vector distributes the gene and the promoter. It is the cell that eventually will make the channel proteins. Answer choice C, specific enzyme production. This is a strange option because we don't have specific information about this. In particular, look back to the questions that we've done relating to DNA and a specific promoter, relating to depolarization, which itself relates to the channel proteins. This all points to answer choice D. The cell produces and incorporates the channel proteins. This is the purpose of the gene and the promoter through the vector for the cell to produce and incorporate the channel proteins. This is the basic idea of DNA being transcribed into messenger RNA and then translated into the protein. And this entire passage is based on the objective of light-sensitive channel proteins in the membranes of certain cells. And so for question 108, the answer is D. And here are some references that you can read in the Gold Standard book.